United Health Group has the highest price per share of any company included in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and it's the 10th heaviest weighted stock in the S&P 500. That means not only is United Health Group the biggest healthcare conglomerate in the United States based on market cap and revenue, it's even bigger than JP Morgan Chase, the nation's largest bank. One of the interesting things about United Health is that they've done a roll-up strategy. They've been buying pieces for years of different types of companies. Wall Street is optimistic about the company's future, with 22 of 25 stock market analysts covering United Health labeling it a buy. If I had to pick one stock, only one stock to buy, I'd buy United. United Health's annual revenue has increased by more than $100 billion over the past decade when adjusted for inflation. United has had superior stock performance over everybody else for two reasons. One would be strategic vision and the other strategic capital management. The company managed to do this through a unique acquisition strategy. United Healthcare is much more than a health insurance company. But somewhere United Health may be growing too big, including the Department of Justice. It's giant. It's just core health infrastructure at this point in America. It's too big to manage. Within healthcare, I think there's really valid concerns around excessive consolidation in parts of the business and that leading to higher prices. I do think that they are becoming more and more utility. And so consequently, I think they're going to have very large market shares because a number of the services that they provide, you wouldn't want redundant services through the system. So how did United Health Group grow bigger than the nation's biggest banks? And what does that mean for consumers and the U.S. economy? A United Health customer could feasibly navigate the healthcare system without ever leaving the United umbrella. They could have United Healthcare as their insurer, see a doctor that works for Optum Health, and have their prescriptions covered under OptumRx. They may even pay their medical bills using Optum Pay technology. United is a unique company in that while they're one of the largest managed care companies with over 40 million people having health insurance through them, that's really only half the business. The other half of the business, which they call Optum, are a series of services businesses, many of which service their health insurance members, but they also service other people. Optum can be split into three general businesses. Optum Health, a series of physician practices. Optum Rx, which is a pharmacy benefit manager, the so-called middleman between drug manufacturers, insurance companies, and pharmacies. And Optum Insight, which is a data and information business that focuses on analytics to monitor things such as cost and manage risk. Think about Amazon or Apple, the way these tech companies create this sort of virtual ecosystem that you can stay within. That's what these healthcare companies are trying to do in terms of being able to offer you not just the insurance, not just the pharmacy benefits, but also the medical care services so that there's more coordination and hopefully people get healthier because it's all tied together. The diversity aspect of its business makes United Health an attractive stock for investors. The health plan arm of the company works synergistically with Optum. The improved medical cost then fuels their health plan growth and their profitability. And that can then drive the innovation both through a build strategy organically, or they can do targeted acquisitions with an Optum. United Health set a precedent with its growth strategy, which has now been adopted by other major players in the sector. What you've seen in this kind of space is because of Obamacare and the medical loss ratio, which was a, basically a profit cap on insurers, the insurers decided that to get around the medical loss ratio, they would buy providers and adjacent businesses. So that's really when United Health Group's Optum subsidiary really expanded their pharmacy benefit manager. They started buying doctor's practices and software and analytics firms. When Obamacare came into view in 2014, a lot of United's peers said, oh, we've got to get bigger in terms of being insurers. So you saw Aetna and Humana try to merge. You saw Anthem and Cigna try to merge. And those mergers got tied up in antitrust because it was too much in the same area of, of integration. What United Health has done is they've done what we call vertical integration. So they kept building, buying smaller companies and building them into the Optum Services area. And because there wasn't that sense of, well, United Health isn't really the biggest physician practice at the time, they were able to buy those and they didn't really raise any concerns with the antitrust regulators. 
The hundreds of deals United Health Group completed over the past decade mostly flew under the radar of regulators until fairly recently. There was just recently an antitrust case against United Health Group because they were trying to buy something called Change Healthcare, which is essentially the Visa and MasterCard for most of the healthcare system. They were basically a payment processor. And the government challenged it and said that this merger would substantially lessen competition. The nearly $8 billion all cash deal between United Health and Change Healthcare was announced in January 2021. The Change Healthcare deal really caught regulators' eye because it was more of a horizontal merger. So they were in the same space, both of them dealing with processing billing. And what the DOJ said was, well, if you get the two biggest in this business, that's going to make United Health far too big. And it's going to give United Health far more information about its competitors. Eventually, United Health Group prevailed in convincing the DOJ that there is a separation between their services businesses, and in this case, it's the payment business of Change Healthcare, from their health plan business, and that there shouldn't be any concerns around confidentiality or you know anti-competitive practices and so on. Optum is trying to become a bank. Optum is trying to say, we want to provide you with your medical credit card. We want to help finance healthcare. They're going into everything. You almost want to say that United Health Group is kind of a rival of government. They own the insurance, they own the providers. You know, they're like the National Health Service at this point, except they're private and they're basically financial engineers. And so they're just trying to extract as opposed to deliver care. When asked for comment, United Health Group told CNBC, because we serve people throughout every aspect of the health system, we have a unique ability to identify opportunities to better integrate care and benefits, develop solutions, and deploy them at scale to improve access, lower costs, and make the experience better for patients and providers. One of the interesting things that the government mentioned during the trial was what's become known in the business as the U factor. And that's the United Health factor in that they are so big that people are kind of a little scared of them, that you know they are the 800 pound gorilla in the space. But at the same time, part of their argument was everyone else is doing this too. And to a certain extent, in the same way that tech companies, they have to be frenemies. United is happy to do business with other market participants. And so when they acquire those physician practices, they don't keep them from contracting with Blue Cross or Aetna or Cigna or things like that. They really encourage that. So I don't think you have as much of an issue that it's engaging in anti-competitive behavior because it is not allowing other competitors to use its services. It's trying to expand its market share by servicing those other players. That virtuous cycle continues for the broader good, I would say, of the healthcare system, both from a medical cost and an affordability perspective for consumers, for employers, for government-funded healthcare, improved access as well, and improved experience, if you will, for the members as well as for their employers and in the various payers in the, in the healthcare system. United Health's growth strategy has transformed the industry into a sector in which the major insurers have adopted the trend of vertical integration, creating multi-service health giants. Now these companies argue we can offer greater efficiency, we can offer more services that put things together for people because our healthcare system has been so disjointed for so long. But there are concerns about how much power large corporations have over people's health care. Is there a systemic risk? I don't think they're going to have like a liquidity problem the way that banks did. But there are certain systems that if they go down would make it very hard for people to access care and you could have people die because of it. But I think the more realistic problem here is that they would just sort of not pay attention to laws that are passed to address conflicts of interest and problems in the market. I wouldn't consider things in health insurance too big to fail in the sense that they create catastrophic damage to the economy. I do think that they are becoming more and more utilities. And so consequently, I think they're gonna have very large market shares because you know, a number of the services that they provide, you wouldn't want redundant services through the system. Being a big company offers United Health insulation from a potential recession, which makes investors and Wall Street analysts excited about the stock. Makes it very attractive from an economic cycle and a macro environment perspective 
Analysts say United Health's performance can also withstand the current high interest rate environment. Interest rate hikes on the plan side are actually a positive. Inflation is good because they get their premiums before they pay the docs and they pay the hospitals. That's a big part of the whole positive cash flow story. And they invest the money in safe short-term investments. So interest rates have not been a headwind. From a recession standpoint, when you look at a United, if they lose membership in their employer health insurance business, they have the third largest Medicaid business. So they're likely to pick up business. And so in general, I would say they're very well hedged on that side of the business. In addition to its Medicaid business, United Health is the largest player in Medicare Advantage. There was definitely a much more fearful view of what the Democrats could do to the Medicare program and the Medicare Advantage program. But if out of 60 plus million seniors, 30 plus million or you know over 50% are in the private program, can you reverse that now? It's irreversible at this point. The health insurance business is really impacted by one of the big mega trends I would see in healthcare, which is the shift to more and more government coverage, like Medicare, Medicaid, public exchange program under the Affordable Care Act. Those are growing. As you see more and more of that, then you're a government services provider, which is really a lot like a utility. So I think that health insurance business, while it still has tremendous growth, the long-term trajectory is for that business to become one with a few really large participants in it at narrower margins, highly efficient. You know, the, the biggest players will be the ones that are able to survive in that. I think United's really well positioned, being the largest government managed care company, um, to, to be successful in that. The debate over whether United Health is too big is still not settled. We have a grossly inflated healthcare sector, which is all about market power and inflating prices. Why wouldn't you get into that business? It's great business. I don't begrudge United Health Group executives for doing this, but we do have a policy problem, which is causing Americans to die earlier and to pay more than they should for care. 